Welcome back students. In this course I'm going to show you how to load spatial data into a PostGIS database. I'm going to demonstrate two ways. One is using a standalone software package that should have been installed on your computer when you installed PostGIS. If you're working on Windows and follow my demonstration, it should definitely be there. If you're working on a Mac or a Linux, I'm not 100% sure. But the second way that I'm going to show you how to do it is right within QGIS. And I think that way is preferable for a number of reasons that we'll talk about. And I'll briefly mention a third way, which is through the command line. I'll show you where to find that software, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about how to do that. If you really want to load data in from the command line, then you're probably more than capable of using Google to figure out how to do that. So the first thing we need to do is get the data that we're going to load. And so you can go to the resources section of this course and download a file called sdb underscore data. sdb again stands for spatial database. And so you want to download that and move it to a directory in somewhere on your computer, wherever you want to put it. It's going to be the working directory for this course. Even though the data is actually going to go into the database, you won't actually be able to see where that data is located. So I have this data right here as a zip file. I'm just going to right click it and I'm going to use a piece of software called 7-zip to extract the data. If you don't have 7-zip, you can use whatever kind of software that you normally use for dealing with zipped archives. And you'll see there's five different shapefiles that are included with that data. Now to get to the program that we use to load the data, there's a couple ways you can do it. One is, if you're using Windows 10, you can just come down here to the search bar and start typing SHP. You'll see why that works a little bit later. And you get to PostGIS 2.0 shapefile and DBF loader and exporter. And the other way to do it is through the Windows Start menu. And if you come down here and come down to the programs that start with P under PostGIS Bundle 2.4, you'll see you have this PostGIS 2.0 shapefile in DBF Loader, and that takes you to the same place. Now, if you still can't find it, I'll show you where it's found in the file system. I'm going to go to my computer, the root directory of my C drive, and we'll go to Program Files, PostgreSQL, and then the directory that's 10, that's version 10, and then our bin directory, and we have this PostGIS GUI directory. But before we look at that, I want to show you that this bin directory has a number of executable programs, and some of this is software that's related to PostGIS and some of it's just straight PostgreSQL. But you'll notice that we have this ogre to ogre that's loading vector data. And if you're familiar with some of these tools, you should recognize them. We also have raster to PGSQL and shape to PGSQL. These are the command line tools if you want to use a command line. And this PGSQL to shape is to export spatial data from within the database to a shape file. So if you want to play with the command line, this is where you'd have to go. Once you open your command line window, you'll navigate to this directory. Again, it's Program Files, PostgreSQL, 10, bin. And you can add that to your environmental variables path if you want to be able to execute these files from any directory that you're in in the command line. So now let's take a look at this PostGIS GUI directory. If we go into that, we can scroll down and we have this file here called shape2pgsql-gui. And all this is is a graphical user interface to that Shape2 PJSQL software that we saw in the command line. And if we double click this to execute it, we'll get to the same PostGIS shapefile import export manager. So the first thing we need to do is get a connection to the PostGIS database. Again, this is client software, so we need to have a connection to the database on the server. And again, we don't have any other users other than a super user. We'll change that in a bit here. But the super username is Postgres. You'll need to enter the password that you chose when you installed PostgreSQL. It already defaults to localhost and on the port 5432. If you change that during the installation, it, you'll have to change it here again to whatever port you chose. But in my case, I'm on 5432. And then we have to give it the database name. And remember, we call this SDB underscore course. Then I'm going to click OK. I get this message down here that says connection succeeded. So that's good. Now you notice I have two tabs, import and export. 
Export is going to be empty right now because we don't have any data in our database. So we're going to use the import tab to import data. I'm going to click add file. And then I'm going to have to navigate to the location where I extracted those shape files to. So in my case, I'm going to go to LSTOM, Dropbox, Documents, Courses, Udemy Courses, Spatial Database, Data, and there I see my shape files. So I'm going to take these first two. This BAEA nest, that's bald eagle nest. B-U-O-W-L habitat, that's burring owl habitat. I'm just going to select these first two and click open. And so here I see the two files that I've chosen. It's going to automatically put it in the public schema. Okay, we'll talk about this in a few lectures about what the schema means. But it's basically just a way of subdividing your data to help you organize different groups of data, almost like a subdirectory in your directory system. It automatically gives it table names, and that's just based on the file names that you give it. But it converts automatically everything to lowercase. And again, I would recommend anytime you're working in PostgreSQL to just use lowercase characters for your table names. It will make your life a lot easier. But if you want to change these, you can change these. Just double click on it and edit it. Same thing, it automatically creates a geometry column called GEOM. We're going to leave that as a default. If you want to change that, again, you can just double click on it and change it. Now, one thing that's a bit of a problem is that this particular software doesn't read the projection from the PRJ file. So it doesn't know what the spatial reference ID is. So when you use this PostGIS shapefile importer, for every shapefile that you import, you have to go in and give it the spatial reference ID. Now I happen to know that for both these files and the other three, that is 4326. And 4326 is a very common spatial reference ID. It's just a geographical coordinate system with latitude and longitude values and uses a WGS84 datum. This is a very common spatial reference ID. In fact, any data that's collected by a global positioning system, this is a default for that. It's WGS84 latitude longitude. So I've got these two files that I've added. Now I'm just going to click the import button. And it tells us we're completed. This first one, bald eagle nest. The shape file type is point. And the PostGIS geometry type is point with two dimensions. We'll talk about what that means in a bit. And for the burrowing owl habitat, the shape file type is polygon. And the PostGIS geometry type is multi-polygon with two dimensions. So we've got data in our database. Now let's go see how we can add data in QGIS. This is actually the way that I would recommend doing it because you're not limited to just shape files. Any kind of data that you can load into QGIS, you can put right into the PostGIS database. So it might be an Esri geodatabase or a GeoJSON file. It might be a GPX file that you've downloaded from your GPS. Just about any kind of vector data that's available can be loaded and viewed in QGIS. Because again, QGIS uses some standard libraries that can access all these vector data types. And so the first thing we have to do is get our data into QGIS. And there are a number of ways to do this. And if you've taken my class QGIS 3.0 for GIS professionals, you should be familiar with this. I'm just going to navigate to the directory where I extracted those shape files. And let's see, we already have bald eagle nests and burring owl habitat in the database. I'm going to get these other three. GPH rookeries, that's great blue heron, linear projects, and raptor nests. And then I'll just drag these down and just zoom to the GPH layers directory. So that's all our data. So again, this came from a shape file, but it could be just as easily anything else. It could be a geo package or a spatial light database or a SQL Server database or anything else. But once you have the data in QGIS, we can load it into PostGIS. And to do that, I'm going to go to Database and then DB Manager. Now, if you don't have DB Manager under your Database tab, or if you don't have a Database tab at all, then you have to go to Plugins, Manage and Install Plugins. DB Manager is a core plugin. So you should have this. And so all you have to do is check that. And you'll have a Database tab. And you'll have a Database menu with a DB Manager option underneath it. So in this DB Manager, I'm going to come down to PostGIS, right click it, and nothing's happening. So let's see what I need to do here. I think I need to make a connection to PostGIS in the browser panel. I thought I could do it here, but I guess I can't. So I'm going to close this. 
And then I'll come up here and in the browser panel, I'm going to go to PostGIS and right click here. And here I have the option to make a new connection. And again, QGIS is client software. And so to access our database from this client, we have to provide this connection information. The first thing is the name and this could be anything. This is just a name that we provide to identify the connection that we're using. So I'm going to give it a name, SDB course. The host, again, is going to be localhost. The port, 5432. The database, SDB underscore course. And then down here, I need to provide authentication credentials. And I'm just going to go to basic. The username is going to be a super user Postgres. And the password is whatever you chose when you install Postgres. And I'm going to click store on both of these. If I don't, I'll have to enter my username and password again every time I open QGIS. But there's some dangers to this too, and that is that the credentials are just stored as plain text in the project file. And if you send the project file to somebody, they might be able to see your credentials. So I'm not going to worry about it because we're just playing around with sample data. But in the real world, if you're using your company's data, you probably don't want to do this. And again, in my class on QGIS 3.0 for professionals, I talk about authorization. In QGIS 3.0, there's a way to save these passwords in a way that they're a lot more secure. And that wasn't available in QGIS 2.x, but we won't get into that now. I'm just going to click Test Connection to make sure that that works. It says connection to SDB course was successful. That's good. I have a couple of options. One thing that I'm going to do is also list tables with no geometry. That's not important now because we don't have tables with no geometry in our database, but we will. And that's an important point because one of the big advantages of using a spatial database is that it works really well with non-spatial data as well. And we'll probably use the same connection throughout the course. So I'm going to go ahead and check that a while. So I'm just going to click OK. It gives us a warning again about storing the password in plain text. Again, I'm not worried about it because it's just made up sample data. I click OK. And now if I expand PostGIS, you'll see we have a connection. If I expand that, see we have the public schema. If we expand that, see we have these two tables that we've already loaded using the standalone PostGIS shapefile loader. And then there's a few other tables in here, including the spatial reference system. These are non-spatial data that PostGIS uses. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So now that we have a connection, I can go to my DB manager and expand PostGIS. I have the SDB course connection. I'll expand that. And a public schema, I'll expand that. Again, we see the data that we already loaded. These other files that PostGIS uses. And now we can load data into this directory. So to do that, we have both an import option and an export option. So we're going to import data. And I can see we have the three feature layers that we already have in our layers panel. So I'll start with the GBH rookeries. I'd have the option to only import selected features if I wanted to. I can choose which schema I want to import it to. If I have more than one schema, in this case I don't. I'm going to give it a table name. That's just going to be GBH underscore rookeries. Again, all lowercase. And there are some options here. Some of them come up with default. I believe that this software will read this spatial reference ID from the PRJ file. We'll see in a minute. But the only option that I'm going to check is create spatial index. And then I'm going to click OK. And I have this message, import was successful. And if I look at this, yeah, it did import the spatial reference from that PRJ file as part of the shape file. And that's another advantage of using QGIS to import data from a shape file is that we don't have to go through and enter that spatial reference ID. So I'm going to do this again for the other two layers. Go Linear Projects, Create Spatial Index, click OK. Oh, I need to give it a output file name. Click OK again. Import was successful. And I'll do one more. The last one is Raptor Nest. Give it a table name, Raptor underscore nests. Click Create Spatial Index, click OK. Import was successful. 
So we're good to go. Now we have five shape files in our PostGIS database. And if I open the PG admin, I can go to my servers. I believe it's my PostgreSQL 10 was the server. Not 100% sure where this other one came from, but anyway, I'm going to enter the password for the Postgres super user. I'm going to click Save Password, so hopefully I won't have to do that again. And OK. Go to Databases. Yeah, there's my SDB course. So if I come down under Schemas, go to Public, Tables, and there I see I have the five shapefiles that we've loaded. So in this lecture, we've accessed the PostgreSQL database using three different clients. The first one was a standalone PostGIS shapefile loader. The second one was QGIS. And the third one is this pgadmin4. So these are all clients that are accessing the same database. And for each one, we had to provide connection information. We had to provide the host name, port number, a username and password, and the name of the database that we wanted to connect to. So that's going to be it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to load some non-spatial data into this PostgreSQL database. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next lecture.